several Ukrainian pastors and missionaries had reached out to me saying, now's the time. The impact the Russian invasion had, you know, on the people, the Ukrainian people, of course, is a feeling of extreme vulnerability, fear, worry, questioning whether or not they would have a country anymore. You know, they'd spent so many years uh, since the fall of the Iron Curtain rebuilding their own identity and things along those lines that just in this start of this war immediately were being chipped away at and depleted. Our desire was to see that propped up, to see the people themselves, not so much the national pride, but the people as the people of God being propped up. And there's an openness to the gospel more than ever before. And so we knew we had to seize the moment when it was hitting and to provide that, that encouragement. I felt like this was the time that we needed to go in and to say, listen, uh, this doesn't need to be about other nations giving money. This is now the time of the church to rise up in the crisis. We're spending actually more time getting to this place than we will even spend there at the conference in Ukraine, just simply because the difficulty of going into a war-torn country. We wanted to be as close to the Russian-Ukraine border where the majority of the fighting was and where they first struck. And I'd been to Kharkiv the year before, and so wanting to go back there this time and do some equipping. It's also where we sent a lot of food supplies. We are blessed to be a blessing. We didn't want to just send natural things, but also spiritual things that were going to bring the change. Here we are on a Ukrainian train heading to our Kharkiv, where all the action's going to happen. 14 hour train ride to Kharkiv. How are you feeling? I am fighting some sickness. I um, got body aches, stuffy head, sore throat, uh, aches and pains. We've been traveling now for over two weeks. I need some sleep. such an important thing for them. It, it, uh, the spiritual climate had shifted. Uh, I would say while we were there, we began to see people that were more spiritually open than ever before. Christ in you is the hope for this nation. Christ in you is the hope for transformation. And the time is now for transformation. A disaster like this, a crisis like this, just brings people to a place of having an openness uh, to the gospel and open to a spiritual, you know, an expression of their spirituality. What I don't want to see happen is that Ukraine just be propped up in national pride, which I'm all for. I'm a patriot myself. But at the same time, we represent the kingdom of God. That's an eternal thing, not a natural temporal thing. And to live from that eternal perspective versus just the natural perspective. But that's also our vision for all over the world, including our own country here. But you have to go first. You have to be available. And then the ability will meet you there.
What we need right now for the endeavors for Ukraine is we want to go back and we want to do more equipping. We want to go to Kiev. We want to go to some other areas and be able to reach out, pour into them and to strengthen them, to prop them up and to take them out on the streets and release the power and the presence of God. We need as much support as possible in order to do that. This is not government aid going in, but this is the church being the hands and feet of Jesus. As we always say in missions, if you can't go, send. And so we're in the place of saying, hey, send us. We can equip the church, not just to go and do the evangelism ourselves, but to equip them to be the evangelist, for them to be operate in healing, for them to operate in the prophetic in order to live the book of Acts and bring people to Christ.